OSCP tunneling. Let's go. Tunneling is one of those that just people get confused by or perhaps don't respect as much as they should or they think that it won't come on the exam, but then it does. And then because of that, they completely fuck the exam. And that's the last thing we want, so. I picked this uh, box right here just because of it having essentially pivoting. So all you need to know is that this endpoint had a SQL injection. We essentially were able to write a PHP system shell, redirect it into the root of the directory. We called it verb PHP. And we have a listener over here waiting. And we went to the verb PHP endpoint with the CMD. We wrote the system commands that we want. This particular machine has Python and let's go. We execute that and we get a shell. So SQLite to RCE. So what is interesting on this machine is that normally here we might want to transfer our tools over. It, do it doesn't have W yet. It does not have curl. It does not have netcat. It doesn't even have fucking ping. And I have done this machine before, so I know that this machine we are interested in getting to. But we can't fucking ping it because it doesn't even have ping. So what do we do in this scenario? So the reason, one of the reasons why tunneling is so useful is that we can take the tools that we have on our Kali machine and we can route it over this machine right there to be able to reach machine inside of its network because of the tunneling we'll be doing. So it has ETH0 and it has ETH1 as routes. We can also look at routes like this. So the machine that I mentioned, it is inside the specific route right here. But again, we can't ping it. So what do we do? So I have my chisel right there. If you don't know how to get it, then essentially just grab it from here. Um, and then we want the AMD64 GC version. We just double get it like this. GCP decode it like this. I already have one, so I'll replace it. There it is. We make it executable. And now it can run it. So, but again, we want to get chisel over on this host. So what the fuck do we do? We can't use wget, we can't use curl, we can't use netget, we can't do almost anything. Now, a simple solution uh, is that I, because we got a shell with Python, so we know that it has Python. So as you can see, it has Python. I just wrote a basic script that will grab the chisel binary from our machine. Just make sure we name the chisel and that we have a listener running. So, oops, let me cat this one, basically for decode it, um, and call it, I mean, and then redirect it to the, a file I call D. Copy the output of D, and then I take all of this and I echo it. I basically for decode it, and then I redirect it to whatever, test.py. And then I run this. Test.py. You see that it grabbed the file. Awesome. I'll kill the shell. And then I will re-execute it. Get a new shell. I will make chisel executable. And then I will see that it's over. So excellent. We got now this binary up and running, and that's what we wanted, but all of that it wasn't really the point of the video, but because this box required it, let us do it like that. So let us run chisel like this. So in this scenario, we want to be the server. And just quick, real quick, before we forget, in the proxy chains, config, right there, you want to have it as SOX5, because we'll be using a SOX5 proxy, have it as local host, and then use ports 1080. That's the setup that I recommend to the students. So we have our server up and running. We are listening on port 8000. As you can see, that is the port that we are essentially opening and listening on. 
and then we are using SOX5. That's why we specified it like this. And then we set it in reverse mode. So again, we have one binary right here acting as a server, and then we have one binary here acting as the client. So we run chisel as the client, and then we want the ton zero interface. This is the VPN IP on our attacker machine. We are opening port 8000, so that's what we want to do. And then we want to use the uh, reverse and the SOX5 mode right here, if I can spell. And then we run that. Missing port. There we go. SOX and not SOX5. So now we're connected. So you can see here, connecting to WebSocket on this phone, connected latency, and then we have a session right here. So excellent. So remember what I said earlier, is that we know that there is an IP running right here, but we can't do anything about it. We can't ping it. What the fuck do we do? Let's say we can try... I know that it has port um, 21 running, so let's try to scan for it. But again, you don't see anything. Why is that? This is filtered. This is not open. We can't see it. But now when I do it like this. We also need the SD command right here. This has to do with due to how proxy chains operates. It needs ST to make a full TCP connection. Now it will work. So we can see that this is open. I can also show you in contrast without the proxy chains. This won't work. We try to scan for it. And then it's filtered. We don't see it. We try to scan for it. We don't see it, right? We need proxy chains. Because with proxy chains, we are essentially routing the traffic over this connected SOX Y proxy that we've set up. And we are reaching a machine inside of the network of this compromised machine. Now that this one is connected to our chisel, this one is essentially acting as a proxy that we are routing the traffic over to be able to attack other machines inside of that network. That's why we were interested in looking at the routes earlier on this particular machine. So yeah, we can now see that that port is open. And now as long as you use proxy chains, you can essentially do anything that you would normally want to do. Um, so yeah, we can see that this one is open. We can try to fingerprint the divan using netcat. And I think you will see something interesting is that, and again, let me just illustrate to you again that we need to use proxy chains for this to work. So we do, um, we don't see anything at all. We use proxy chains. We are properly routing your traffic now. And now we are able to fingerprint the FTP running on the servers. And lo and behold, we see that it's running on this particular FTP, which uh, I know is massively vulnerable. <laughs> yes, there we have it. I would not be able to use Netcat, remember, before on this machine. Um, because it doesn't allow that tool or W yet to anything. But we are essentially now routing the traffic over that machine using proxy chains. And now it's coming from our machine, so we can use our tools. And we're essentially just using this as a jump box. So this is extremely handy to know. So we can take this one. And we can use search bloit with X to see the content of the file. We can see that... <laughs> These are the default values, so let us just grab the file. And let us run it. And there we go. The version is massively vulnerable. It is essentially backdoored. And again, of course, the exploit will also not work without proxy chains. 
that's why it's so important. So, just do this machine. If you still struggle with this, just keep doing it, test around, play around. Also do the wreath room. It also has some pivoting, as you can see. Also excellent practice. So, I hope this uh, helped you guys. And uh, good luck with your pivoting and good luck with your OCP overall. And let's crush it.